<clears throat> the v the VR headset does not allow me to see in any way. Oh, okay. Are you wearing a VR headset? Oh, uh, I wish. Yeah, no, he very much wants VR for Christmas. Mm. Yeah, then I could actually play in VR and poop my pants easier. Don't poop your pants. Okay, anyway. Shall we begin? Yes, please. Okay. Avast me hearties and welcome once again to full stream ahead. I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser. And with me as always is me skinny rich friend and first mate. It's Maz. It Ozzy, so glad to have you back. And once again, our special guest this evening. A Gamer Toy Freddy. Hey, Gamer Toy Freddy. Welcome to the show for the first time. All right, tonight's episode is Chapter 12, The Siege. The Mandalorian rejoins old alloy allies for a new mission. Oh, director this week is Carl Weathers himself. Um, Jean Favreau is getting our written by and our created bys. And George Lucas, of course, gets the based on Star Wars by credit this week. Um, so this is a lot of fun. Uh, of course, we have Mando returns to... Uh, Where's he returned to? This isn't Tatooine. No, he's not going to Tatooine this one. This is the one where he goes to um, the previous planet. The, the planet he starts out on. Where uh, Carl, Weathers, Carl Weathers and... Um, oh, Cara Dune. Ca Cara Dune are there. Um, and... We, you know, it's interesting because essentially what it is, he comes there, I guess because he knows that this is where he can get the parts for his ship. Because he needs to get his ship fixed, yeah. And, and you know, wouldn't hurt to have a couple friendly faces around. Mm-hmm. And, and that is knows, what he has to deal with here. And he yeah. knows he is down to throw down if he needs to. Exactly. But as it turns out, they actually want him to help them throw down. Well, um, yeah. You know. Um, and it is neat. And right. it is but not, not for free. They are going to fix his ship. They're going to fix his which, ship. Which and, you've seen is not an easy task to accomplish, even with a thousand credits. Ex well, you know, not for nothing. These are, you know, it's, this is a, this is pre-imperial. This is a pre This is a classic. He's like basically driving a, you know, he's driving a 58 Cadillac everywhere he goes. And he keeps on getting it, and getting it messed up. You and know? Getting him out of trouble. Yeah, it's, but anyway, so he is there, he is, um, he's here, he's there, he's everywhere. Um, Who are you going to call second friend Fred Bear? Yes, um, oh, uh, that's our Mando for you. But, um, but we actually, they actually refer to Cara Dune as the Marshal in this one, which I thought was interesting. Because it shows that this idea of establishing a Marshal is is pretty common among these worlds, but also within it, just this idea that, yeah, there are, because by the end of this, we get there are marshals and then there are marshals. There are marshals with badges and then there are people that are just called the marshal. Which I think is, think is a very interesting distinction between the two and one that we should explore later or, you know, as time goes like on. It's like deputized helpers, you know, kind of deal. Well, you know, what, what it is is like, essentially what it, and what it is is, of course, Carl Weathers' his character is, he is now, and again, it, it, it's funny because you think about, oh, he's running the planet, except he's not running the planet. He's running this one spaceport. Because in all of these planets, it's like there are these very small parts of the planet that we ever get to see where there is this outpost on this planet. And really, if you think about it, probably most of this planet, thousands and thousands of miles of this planet, is completely, I mean, you can make this argument that probably most of the planet is completely unaware of the human presence in this part of the planet, you know? <laughs> of, of the spaceport uh, presence. Because 
Really, I mean, yeah, obviously they have speeder speeder devices they could fly all around the planet, but we really don't ever see them do that. We really see them kind of usually within a distance that you arguably could have walked if you had to. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like you know, it's it's interesting in that sense when you think about it that really all of this fighting over planets it's usually about you know probably maybe a few hundred miles of the planet which is where the spaceport and the strategic value is but anyway in this moment we have um basically the imperials or the former imperials have a base on on the far side of this planet and as they're talking to mando about what they need to do because essentially what it is in the last episode Bo-Katan essentially told uh, our our Mandalorian friend where he can find a, a Jedi, where um, a Shokatan um, fan favorite <laughs> fan favorite Jedi is currently hiding out. So he has to get his ship fixed so he can go get go find a Shokatan and give her the child. In this moment, they're saying, "Well, look, what we need you to what we need you to help us with is clearing out this last hive of rebels, or last hive of Imperials on our planet." Which is interesting, especially because if you think about, it, like, in the last time we saw this, you know, you had the whole Moff Gideon thing, an attempt by the Imperials to reinvade, and then they repel them. And for what it's worth, you have in this sense this idea that that that. Moff Gideon plays a very long, uh, you know, uh, Juan Carlos Esposito kind of game. Um, his character very much is not about, you know, you know, just attacking until he wins. He he knows what he's doing. He knows how to move the pieces slowly on the board because it's not it's not a it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, you know, and. They agree, and we get to see our little blue guy back, who was fun. Who oh, is, from the first season. Yeah, who is basically working off his bounty. 450 by, years of community service. How long does he yeah. live? Yeah. Well, you I know, mean, I, is the point that they're making that he'll never stop, or are, is the point that they're making that this species might live for way longer than that? So that is a reasonable sentence to hand down to somebody. I mean, it's yeah, it, it, it's an interesting question. Although they they make, I think they make it so high so they can periodically knock time off of his sentence. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, yeah, yeah. You know, ah, we're gonna take a hundred years off your sentence. You know, <laughs> right, but it would help me understand what that you know really means for him. If you take a hundred years off, is two hundred fifty years still a you know um, pointless amount of time? Well, I, I imagine within the context of it, he is a being who was, he was on the run before. It's like, really, it's just about, okay, this puts me in a position where I theoretically could get away hmm. once I get the opportunity. And because there is no real law keeping me here, I can either make a break when I want to, or they're eventually just going to say, you know what? just go home you know <laughs> we're tired oh the or or it's like well at least i'm out and i can make a life for myself here you know and that's another aspect of it it's like you know yeah i'm my own species and you know we can i can be here at least i can call my can call my mom on life day you know all those kind of things right you know i can't be there but at least i can call her from here you know and all these sorts of things that, you know, yeah, there's a lot that maybe goes into it. And, yeah, it's basically he's been sentenced to a lifetime of community service. But, you know, maybe that isn't as horrifying as it seems. But they make him drive them in his speeder, which is also like, I thought, very, that he has a speeder. So it's like no matter – so for whatever else it's worth, this guy clearly – has assets sitting around. This guy is clearly playing a lot of games the whole time, mm. you know? And because he gets very upset when his speeder eventually does have a bad moment. Uh, <laughs> and he's very feels put, about that, put out that he is being made 
to be a part of the raiding party, you know. And Not just which, that, but he's he's almost treated like the expendable infantry. Well, you know, it's like, well, yeah. I mean, I well, so as and here's a, here's a fun fun little note I made about this that I really feel like the first season the first season was the Magnificent Seven. I really feel the second season is going to be the Dirty Dozen. Hmm. Huh. You know, that's the take they're going to be going with, where we're going to have a lot of these people that are maybe lesser, much more morally questionable characters, but they're all going to be brought together because we need the morally questionable characters to do the morally questionable things. And in this moment, he is, yeah, he is definitely... (laughs) being drug along but he but it's also and i also think it's that real real fact like if we don't take him along he's just gonna leave you know it's like I, we can either freeze you back in carbonate or and i love the fact that he says yeah i still can't see out of this eye <laughs> you know <laughs> great reference to uh, carbonite blindness um it's a real condition always have a professional unthaw you from carbonite kids uh, <laughs> Is that just a function of somebody not thawing you properly, or is that a function of the carbonite freezing itself? Well, I believe the carbonite freezing can damage your your, your eyes, but if you're thawed properly, I guess it isn't. It will not cause permanent blindness. But if you are thawed improperly, based on what we've seen in some some books about it and other other non officially canon sources that yeah that problems in the thawing process can cause optical damage so it's like fugu yeah it's although, although fish. arguably you know maybe they can give you a new eye too you oh know? fair enough i mean like, I, it, it, yeah. yeah although again that's one of those things it's like yeah it's easy to get a new arm if you're a jedi but that poor guy in Mos Eisley Cantina who loses his arm yeah, it might take him a couple of weeks to get a new arm you know hey that's not that bad really yeah. Or maybe his species can regrow arms. That's always a possibility too. Mm. Anyway, so they do go down to the um, to the uh, imperial base. Oh, and this is also where the blue guy comes in handy because he's the lock. He's the lock pick. He's the uh, he's the guy who cracks codes and opens things. He's the thief. And in classic thief character style, in any proper raiding party, when we're doing our little dungeon crawl here, you know, he doesn't really want to be there. He's a thief. He wants, you know, he might, if he felt there was a real reward for him here, but he knows there's nothing of value in this place. Um, but, you know, a uh, uh, Mandalorian goes to the roof, they go in through the door. They meet up, and now they've got, and it's like just got a skeleton crew here. In fact, we see that really no one is there except for like a few troops, because even the scientist isn't there. We have an old message from the scientist to Moff Gideon that is the big reveal. It's like, what? He actually, Moff Gideon's dead. It's like, well, no, this is only two weeks old that he's sending a message to Moff Gideon. So clearly they're communicating. Um, we do see our various clone slugs which a lot of people feel very look very snoke like in this moment um that could be how snoke was made because maybe moff gideon isn't the one asking maybe it's ooh emperor palpatine because we know he survived spoiler alert for uh last for rise of skywalker but he alive yeah at this point, we know that, so that's fair. But yeah, I mean, or even even without that, we know that Snoke's around. So, but this idea of Emperor Snoke maybe being from this that that that's that's a fan theory that's not really based in anything except for some of the clone slugs we see. So, what about what the scientist says about taking blood out of? He says that in this little clip, right? Right. He I, says I could that, only take out as much before the subject or the donor. Uh, would die so I could only take a little. So what? What? Uh, what, what is and going I, on with that? Yeah. Well, the idea is is actually what they're saying is they don't want to kill the donor, which is the child. Right. 
because obviously you kill this 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 is as Tristan uh, I'm sorry as um Gamer Tory Freddy will tell us this was one of the problems after um after uh Django Fett died was they lost the original materials in which they were growing parts for the clones actually uh speaking of Django Fett dying apparently um I don't know if it's can well, no, it's not canon because Starkiller was in it. But Boba Fett found out that the Empire were, was making clones. Out. He thought they were making clones out of his father, but he realized that they were making clones out of him behind his back. Mm -hmm. And since they were making clones out of him, I think they all became, like, deformed or they were, like, torturing them. Yeah, so, but that's the idea, is that what they want is they want to use the child as the donor for whatever they're creating. Because they wanted to have that midichlorian count. Can't they just clone, you know, things that couldn't they have cloned uh, Baby Yoda? Well, but the thing is, you can in the in the cloning process as it exists, you need the original living donor. Uh -huh. If you make a clone of a clone, it breaks down. But they're also, because they're also, what is also important in this is when they're making these clone bits, they're actually using parts of it. They're not use, They're not doing a straight clone. Like, which is essentially, Boba Fett is a straight clone of Jango Fett. He wasn't, you know, he was born, he probably had a whole time where he was a baby, you know, and he was growing as a natural being. Um... But for what they're doing is they're trying to manufacture a fully grown being and they just want to use parts of it. So they want to essentially use, they want to use baby Yoda DNA mixed in with clone trooper DNA, mixed in with anything else to create a uh, super clone trooper that's going to be, because... Yeah, when we get to the end of this, we actually see, you know, when we see all the lines there of the, what seemed to be cybernetically enhanced clone troopers or whatever they are, you know, when we get to I, the, yeah. I don't know if this is true, but in my opinion, I think that these might be a form of purge troopers, or maybe they might be dark troopers, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it's just my opinion. I don't know if this is all true. It's a fair opinion, uh, Gamer Tory Freddy. And I do think that that may be it, like what it is. And this is one of the most interesting things about uh, The Mandalorian and about, you know, the entire Disney purchase. And what became Star Wars Legends. Because... Everyone got mad because everyone said, oh, Disney said all these things don't exist anymore. And like always is the case, that's not what they said. What they said was these things weren't canon, they were legend. Which means they were effectively apocryphal, like the apocryphal gospels or the apo any, any apocryphal story, which is any religious story that you will come across that isn't in the main canon. So when you think about things like, you know, the apocryphal gospel of Peter or any of the stories of, of Jesus as a teenager, all these things, these are called the apocrypha because they aren't a part of the central canon of biblical doctrine, whether you're using, you know, Catholic. But they're accepted as truth? Um, well, no, what they are, what it is, is it, it is not a statement that they are false so it's kind of like uh george washington chopping down the cherry tree yeah like um, that so whether or not something like that ever happened not is, the point it's not the point it's what is the lesson that, that you learn from it and in this case what it is saying is that there's a lot of things that could be canon mm. but mm. we haven't made them canon yet so right now they're just legends which means you can say that and you can use that as a legend and as a basis for your theories because all of our writers are going to be doing that too. Right. And, and, and if your idea is good enough, perhaps we will canonize it. So use exactly. that as an open door um, to create. Exactly. All right, all right. Um, so um, it's, I'll just give my example. The legends are like um, things that um, 
are not prove that are not like proven true until until Disney decides to make them proven true. So right now they're just legends, but for all we know, uh, but the Empire could have been making clones of Boba Fett behind his back. Exactly. It'll just take somebody uh, industrious and a good storyteller like John Favreau to come along and say, hey, I've got a good way to actually tell the story. And they'll be like, yeah, you know what? Let's canonize that. Well, exactly. And that's what we're seeing with a lot of what John Favreau is doing is he's bringing a lot of stuff that was fan favorite into canon. Mm, mm. And that's the whole mm. idea is that he, he is bringing this stuff into canon, making it the reality you know, the Rebels universe, which I, and I really, the Rebels universe and the Clone Wars universe were always canon, arguably, but it, it, it has more girth now because it is live action. Um, so we do get, we get, we get a lot of fun. One of the things I love about this is when we actually see that all of the hovering technology is literally a hovering technology. You can, like, a speeder bike, you can jump it off something, but you can't fly. It's not mm. a flight thing. It's going to go down. And then we also see, basically, sadly, the guys on the speeder bikes just crashing into each other, which, again, shows you this idea that, you know, maybe these are not the best. Maybe they're not getting the best recruits, you know? Mm. The Empire really, and that's all we, what I've always said about the Empire, is that the biggest problem with the Empire is that they want to have this fascistic control um, which means they need lots and lots of cannon fighter troop which means that their troops are going to become really really watered down yeah and their of, armor is is, okay. is 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 not even made to withstand anything <laughs> oh, well yeah. i mean uh you got a was, manufacturer with that one it was supposed to work. government contract yeah. man lois bitter it, it was it was supposed to be blaster proof, but when it actually works, it does break and cause internal bleeding, which yeah. still has you die. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It, it, but you know, but that's the that's the thing because they needed they needed boots on the ground, and when they need boots on the ground, you're going to have people that aren't the best at what they do. You may get some people that are really good at what they do, and they're the guys that survive. Well, I mean, the scout troopers were selectively chosen out of the best of the best. But for all we know, the best of the best could have been, like, mediocre in our state. Yeah, I mean, that's really the thing of it. And also, it depends on – because they have to be everywhere in the galaxy. You know, you're not going to get ten guys who are all the best all in the same spot, you know. But Because even if you find ten guys who are all the best, you're going to send them to ten, ten different spots in the galaxy – hoping that their awesomeness will rub off on the mediocre troops you give them to command, you know? Mm. But there were some, but there were some actual good troopers. There were, some were actually able to shoot down snipers or yeah. the stormtroopers that were in the start of the, of the original trilogy did gun down all of the rebels in there. They did yeah. kill every single rebel. Yeah, except exactly, because those were, those were essentially Darth Vader's elite, or Moff Gideon, or sorry, Moff Tarkin, Grand Moff Tarkin's elite troops. So he had the best. He had his Green Berets in there. And in this moment, what we're really seeing is just how spread them they can get. And in, but it's also a very cool thing because, of course, they, they steal the troop transport, which was, I remember that toy. Richer Kids and Me had it, not me, but I did get to play with it because I was friends with Richer Kids and Me. Uh, <laughs> I remember my, my, the, uh, the Dickies across the street. They had all the Star Wars stuff. They had the troop transport. They had the little guys. I remember another group up the uh, another side of the street the guy had the oh man the 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 the, the han solo blaster pistol that you know that you could hold and it was a blaster it was, was oh, that it wasn't like it was orange was, like it is nowadays it was just wait, a was, black awesome blaster pistol all right so you answered my question i was going to ask was this before where they had to make um toy guns actually look like toy guns no, this was back when you could have a toy gun that would get you shot for it. Um, although, to be fair, 
that's still the case. It's like, I don't know what, it's like, why do we even bother to make them orange now? Because you're still shooting kids with toy guns for some reason. So, uh, anyway, moving right along from there. But yeah, no, but that troop transport, that's a really cool, that's a really cool toy. It's got the gunner seat and we get um, Carl Weathers in the gunner seat just shooting and it's really awesome. And they're trying to run because of course, um, Mando takes the speeder bike uh, to get the the Razor Crest so that he can give the air support. And we actually get this great dogfight scene that is just amazing. An amazing dogfight scene. And we see the, <laughs> the little, little the child's in there. It's, just, it's a roller coaster. He's like, yeah! <laughs> and then he throws up the cookies. Also, fun fact, apparently those cookies, um, those this YouTuber who made actual versions of those cookies, and he was told by the creator that they were actually a blue raspberry flavored. Oh, oh that's oh. interesting. Um, I can imagine that. Of course, I don't know what blue milk tastes like, but maybe it is kind of a blue raspberry flavor. Because they were clearly a blue milk macaroon. That you know, freaking baby Yoda just steals from people. Yeah, like, I'm surprised. Oh, give me your cookies. Retaliate. You do not want cookies. You want to give me your cookies. <laughs> also, you cookies. um, I don't think they said this, but just to let anyone know, I don't think we said this. I wasn't really paying attention, but uh, a stormtrooper did fall in lava. Yeah. yeah, a lot of stormtroopers fell in lava. A lot of people fell in lava in this one because they blew up the lava pit. <laughs> You know, but hey, got rid of all the, got rid of that last, that last vestige of an imperial, of an abandoned imperial base. So hmm. it's like clearly that's the thing, and that that's where it becomes kind of telling that the scientist is not at that base anymore. That basically it was just being kept active. That they've already pulled everything out of it that they wanted from it because they knew he would arrive. Well, no, actually, I don't even think what... Well, I think they had plans for it because clearly at the end, we find out that the, that the, that the um, mechanic who gets put in charge of fixing the ship actually put a tracer on there because he was on the take from Moff Gideon. He looked shifty right from the get-go. Yeah, that's what Trist, that, that's what uh, Gamer Toy Freddy said, is that yeah he looked very shifty right from the get go, so um, that is that is a telling aspect of the story. Hmm. Oh, okay, but anyway, by the end of this, the you know the 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 ra our ragtag heroes have claimed the planet. They've gotten rid of the last Imperial stronghold. Um, you know, Mando, of course, we get the cute thing with the child throwing up the cookies he just ate. <clears throat> After you go on the roller coaster ride and you get that line, I got to do some internal maintenance up here. Mm. Um, <laughs> but uh, in that moment, we get a very nice, you know, he flies off. And then we get, we see those cops from the previous episode come back. Actually, I think it's been the same. I think that 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 gray-haired Asian guy, he's been the same cop who's been following him around. I think that was the cop when they blew up the uh, yep. criminals. I think he was the cop who pulls him over. And now he's the cop who's showing up here. He's like, yeah, I see you had a razor crest here. And like, ah, the droids don't know what they're talking about. You know, those droids, they don't know a razor crest from a, uh, you know, from a slave one, quite frankly. And... <laughs> Your oh, camera's man. on, Gamer Toy Freddy. Oh no, no, he's trying to show us something. Oh, he's that trying to show Yoda there. He's, he's trying to show his his. These are from the Advent Calendar. Ah. And he's got his Crystal Yoda. He's got Commander Cody. That's either a Wookie or Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh. <laughs> is that a Wookie? Uh, it's a Wookie. All right. It is. is it's a Wookie <laughs> with a Santa hat. Yes, it is. I'm sorry, a life day hat. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, my face wasn't shown. Did you guys see my face? No one saw your no. face, Gamer Toy Freddy. You're we can fine. see your face, Freddy. Yeah, we can see that you're, face. You're, yeah, you're, your you're wearing VR, uh, VR goggles. Why does an animatronic need VR goggles? Look, uh, look, Illumix made it. They just they wanted some really cool skins for the characters. 
It doesn't matter if it makes sense. Fair enough. Anyway. I, I think it. I think it's more meant to mess with your head than it is providing any functionality for uh, our friendly teddy bear. It's more I don't think it even works for him. I think it just obscures his vision way more. Yeah. yeah, but since he's a robot, he could have like little cameras and sensors everywhere. He might be perceiving the world in infrared and he might not even need uh, regular eyes to see regular vision, you know? So that yeah. might just be to fool you into thinking that maybe he can't see you. So you feel a little sense of security, but he's watching you all the time. Yeah. There actually is a little bit of a white, a yellow line. So maybe that's how he sees. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, but anyway, so, but the cop does come back and the cop uh, basically gives uh, Cara Dune the badge to say, hey, you know, you guys want to be, and basically gives her the whole speech. Like, look, we can only do this if you guys want to be a part of this. And, and like you're doing the job anyway. Yeah, but gives her the get, which is kind of cool that he just he like probably has like a box of martial badges. Just give these out when you get there. If you see someone who like seems like they're worthy of being a, a, a martial, give them a badge. Um, hey, that's how you build these things. Yeah, well, I mean, for real, that is. You know, you got to go out there, you got to find the people, and then you know, and for what it's worth, it's that whole thing with like you know. They don't got time to help you fix your fix your ship, man. We got we got we are like we are we are a skeleton crew too. We've got the entire outer rim to patrol, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, hey, we just saved your 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 behinds, and now we could stay here and fix your ship, or we can go save someone else's behinds. Exactly, and that I'm sure is their their perspective. That's because everyone has a perspective, you know. That's the truth of it. Is that yeah. there's not. There is not just one answer. And, and nobody owes you anything, and you should be grateful for what you do get. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's the moral of the story. Just be grateful for what you have, you ungrateful person. Yes. <laughs> All right. So any final thoughts on tonight's episode, gang? Uh, did we go over that, that one mechanic was a spy? Did we go over that? We did mention that, yes. I was not paying attention. I am not a good podcaster. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay, Gamer Toy Freddy. We love you anyway. Uh, Maz, any final thoughts tonight? Uh, no, I, I'm loving where this season is going. Um, Honestly, this season has been great. This this series is great. It it's just great all around. I How want to see Cop being Vance here. back. I'm sorry. Wait, what? I want to see Cobb Vance back. Cobb Vance. Oh yeah, the sheriff yeah. Sheriff in that old town. Well, I mean, I, you know. You never know. Like I said, if we're going to, if, like I said, if the first season was the Magnificent Seven, this is the Dirty Dozen. And Ooh. he seems a little dirty. Especially now that you don't got his, don't got his armor no more. It doesn't have his Dura steel. Yeah, he's a survivor. He knows how to get things done. Um, be an asset to any team. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I'm certain we're going to go back to Tatooine at some point because there's Ooh, just that, too many great characters. There. Yeah, that, that'd be great if we can get all those characters together for a final battle. It's like yeah. Avengers Assemble, you know? Well, I, get, I mean, I don't know how many episodes are in the season. I mean, this is episode four. We might only be in an eight episode season, which is like... You're killing me, but right. you're Wait, killing I, me, Favro. I, you're killing me. Especially if you have the confidence to release the first three all together. And then yeah, only well, have a couple of weeks of enjoyment left. Yeah, but, you know, it, it is what it is. We, we, we live in the world as it is. <laughs> um, in the meantime, uh, hey, kids, I don't know when you're hearing this story. Uh, probably all the last holidays have passed, but you know what might even be coming up soon? Valentine's Day, sweetest day, Ooh. inauguration day, my birthday. Or maybe sometimes you can just be lonely on Valentine's Day. Well, yes, that? that happens too. But my point is, is that if you have a loved one that you want to get a, give a gift to, go look for the um, Capes and Lunatics gift guide and find all the wonderful things that you can find for them there. Or just treat yourself. Or treat yourself. Maybe you deserve a gift. Maybe you deserve a gift just this once. You would make a great gift for yourself. Some tweaked audio headsets. They're fine quality headsets that you can get at tweakedaudio.com. They're beautiful sound. Everything great. You might want to look into that. And here's the thing. You can use a coupon code for that called Southgate. Right in Southgate is the coupon code. You'll get a discount. Then 
go over to huntedkiller.com, get the Hunted Killer package, which is just a fun escape room delivered to your house. Use that code again, get another discount. Same code, get the same discount. It's awesome. Likewise, why don't you go down to our show notes, click that Amazon link. It's going to cost you nothing, but if you go to Amazon from our location, we get we get something from that, and you get to buy whatever the heck you want from Amazon, including Pod Life, the book, uh, the written the book written by the Southgate Media Group family, um, for you so you understand why people podcast, how they podcast, and what it means to be a podcaster. So, so many presents, so little time. Yes, it's available in a hard physical media edition as well as an ethereal digital edition both of which can be yours uh, for mere shekels. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Gamer Toy Freddy, if someone would like to contact you or see what you do, what's your social needs? Um, you could go to my YouTube channel, uh, Toxin Gamer 13 uh, I might not post that often, but... But I hope you do enjoy, and I and I might be doing some more Five Nights at Bray's AR videos. Very good. And my first mate, Monsieur Mazmanzor, how can people find you? Oh, they can email me at mazmanzor at gmail.com or find me on Facebook under Mazmanzor. That's M-O-Z-Z-M-A-N-Z-O-O-R. And for those of you who are watching us on YouTube with the video right now, you just saw Maz's knuckle tattoos showing you what a tough guy <laughs> Maz is. You know, you see a guy with knuckle tattoos, you know, you don't mess with him. You just, you just back away. That's like when you see someone wearing Mandalorian armor, you go, oh, my bad, sir. My bad. <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to write to me in the old-fashioned email way where Maz and Paz once did, you can do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And, of course, why don't you all follow me on the Twitter? Because I live tweet things sometimes, like DuckTales, a woohoo in its final season. If you remember. If I remember to. At Charlie Hesser, that's C H A R L I E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For what? Quality. Darn it, I couldn't jinx you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gamertory Freddy. Thank you, Maz, for all the help on my grand logo. All right, me hearties. You have sailed with us once again on the streams of the internets to watch these shows with us. Please come again next week for exciting adventure again on full stream ahead. Arrgh. Is it finished? Yes, it is. Wait, I just want to tell you something, Maz. Uh, I just want to say, um, sorry for spoiling that, uh, that person. What, what's the name of the uh, girl with superpowers in Marvel? <laughs> <laughs> you used Captain to watch Marvel? a series about? No, um, it's a it's it was a series. I forgot. Jessica Jones. I'm sorry. I just want to say I'm sorry for spoiling the uh, the person was her mother. Oh, oh, that, this is that, going all the way back to the yeah, Jones like cast three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We've all gotten over it. <laughs> but thank you for being so conscientious as to apologize for the spoiler. <laughs> It's uh, perfectly fine. Yes, yeah. I can call you Tristan now because we're not. This isn't going to go on this show. So. Right, right, right. This is just yeah, going to get cut out. You can oh, do right. no wrong. You're totally fine always. Okay. Uh, send me the links to download when you're done, Miles, you got it. and I'll upload them to uh, Phil and all as well. Thanks for doing this, man. You got it. Have a great night, man. Be I well. enjoyed.